Greetings. Welcome to some more time in the Word of God together. Let's bow and ask His Holy Spirit to open us to the great things that God has to say. Thank you, Almighty God. You have given your attention to your people. And we know that even now, whoever is going through your word together, oh, you hear us all and we thank you. And you are teaching and leading us all into the greatness of your presence and power. Thank you now in Christ's name. Amen. So as you see, the title of our message today is Let's Become Steadfast. Recently, Judy and I heard a pastor speaking about the troubles of our nation and urged us that whatever comes, he, he urged us that whatever comes, regardless of how bad it is, the church must remain, quote, steadfast. Surely, this pastor is correct. That word, steadfast, seemed to stick to me so that after a while I realized it was the Spirit leading me to follow up on it, and as I did, I became aware it was to be shared here. Steadfast is in Psalm 112, which after introducing a man who fears the Lord, goes on in verse 7 to reveal, quote, he will not fear evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. The verse is explaining that a person becomes steadfast when he truly trusts the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 1.11, it is revealed to us the Lord wants us strengthened with all spiritual power. He wants you and me, wants us strengthened with all spiritual power. For what? As he goes on, well, he says, for this purpose. What would you imagine that purpose to be? Well, God said it is for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience. Notice how important, how important steadfastness and patience are since one of the purposes of spiritual power is to bring us into both of them, steadfastness and patience. Most of us are familiar with the word patience. It appears as a work in the Spirit bringing us in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. However, we do not hear much teaching about steadfastness, which is mentioned many times in the scripture. The word comes from a Hebrew word, kavan, K-A-V-O-N, which gives what the rabbis called kavanah, which means fixed. It means all this. It means fixed, firm, stable, lasting, and even ready. Are you ready for what God wants to give you? Are you ready for what he wants to do to you, through you? Are you ready for this the removal of things that aren't in his way that aren't of his choosing in you to removing them from you? Who wants Kavanaugh? Who is expecting this fruit of the Holy Spirit? Are you However, we, I'm sorry, excuse me, David, next point is that David had Kavanaugh. When David was among lions, though, though he said he was among those who breathe forth fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharp sword. Well, when he said that, he exalted God and cried out, be exalted in the heavens, O God. And he continued, though, about this. They have prepared a net for my steps. They dug a pit for me. Then he continued, 
they themselves have fallen into the midst of it, in the midst of the pit that they made for him. Psalm 57, 4 through 6. That's the NAU version. Now notice David's following words. Quote, My heart is steadfast. O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing. Yes, my heart will sing praises. There is a point here that is overlooked, for it appears these words of celebration follow the enemy's fall into the pit. In other words, it appears that he celebrated after his enemies were defeated, but that's not really the case. It's, it's more powerful than that. The words are literally, get this, they will fall into it. He was praising God, believing that they will fall into the pit as he praised and was stead, steadfast with God. Now look at, continue with steadfastness of heart. The point is that David said his heart is steadfast. Oh God, as he continues, my heart is steadfast. I will sing, yes, my heart will sing praises in the midst of their digging him a pit. Not afterwards, but in the midst of it. So in great trouble, David declared, my heart is steadfast, my heart is steadfast. God wants us to have, God, you and me, he wants us to have this steadfastness in our hearts at all times. Thank you, Jesus. Who's hungry? Who's thirsty? Who wants? Who's expecting? Who's desiring? Moreover, this strong power is ours in Christ. As noted in 1 Corinthians 57 to 58, quote, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He won the victory, but he gives it to us. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Let us rejoice and re receive, for God gives us the victory. God gives us the victory. Having gained, giving the victory to us, the Lord then can say, quote, Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, I've been reminded that you know we can be steadfast and immovable in ways that aren't God's ways, and so we need to be alert about that. He's talking about in God's way. In Psalm 16, 8, we learn that David proclaimed, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. What, what, what's he going to say from there? Because God is at his right hand, I will not be shaken. God is our only means to steadfastness and he means to give it to us that we too might not be shaken, but we must seek, desire, receive, and even celebrate as David celebrated before he saw God's victory. He knew God is to be trusted. Steadfastness is vital to us all. In Colossians 1, we read these words. Yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death. Jesus did this through his death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Verse 22. But consider carefully the important words that follow. So he, again, he has given, he has reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy 
and blameless and beyond reproach. Praise God, wonderful. But he doesn't stop there. The next word, get this, is if. If you continue in the faith, firmly established and steadfast, not moving away. Most are familiar with the importance of faith, but how about the other two words, established and steadfast? Faith can bring them both, to bring us to be established and steadfast in the ways and the love and the power of the Almighty God. Our Lord led Paul to pray for us so that we would be established and steadfast. So in 2 Thessalonians 3, 5, we can hear his, God's loving concern for us. Unquote. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. Christ's steadfastness, surely he is steadfast, is for us. And he is in us directing hearts to what he has. Jesus comes to be in us, to give us all that he has. Amen. We'll close with 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and in the steadfastness of Christ. Amen.